Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my spring series. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. For this DIY, we are working with the Dollar Tree Easter egg. And first I'm gonna steal that bunny off the back because I want him for another DIY. And I'm just taking the Dollar Tree tile, turning it upside down, tracing it, cutting it out and then I'm gonna glue it on the front of the egg. Now the one thing with these tiles is that it's only sticky on the edges, so once you cut them into any kind of shape, they're not sticky anymore. The sticker part actually falls off and you have to rely on your hot glue. Now I am using Sherbonder hot glue, which is meant for multiple surfaces like glass and plastic. I'm not sure about the Dollar Tree hot glue. I have used that for everything and never had any trouble, but I just wanna let you know I'm not using it in this video. And now I'm just applying one coat of white acrylic paint. This isn't chalk paint. On these particular DIYs, I did not care if some of the under part showed through because I was going to do another process each time. And I also thought if a little bit of the under part showed through, it might look more like metal or, I don't know, I love the way all of these came out, so it worked. Here's the colors I use for the next step. These are all Apple Barrel acrylic paint. It's some of my favorite paint to work with. If you like to use chalk paint and you want this not to be transparent at all, there is a wonderful part one, part two videos down in my description box on how to make homemade chalk paint for pennies on the dollar, so check that out. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint this first part here yellow. Now, what I did when I turned the egg upside down to trace it for this tile, I had to turn it diagonally and it ended up resulting in a beautiful placement with the center design. And then those lines where the arrow is pointing provided a nice natural separation for each color. So I took advantage of that. So now I'm painting with pink, and this is supposed to be a really super soft, very dry brush technique. You're just aiming to bring out the pretty designs from the tile and maybe leave a little bit of color behind, but as you can see, I was a little too heavy handed at the top there where the pink is. So you're gonna see me go back in there and correct it. I just paint it white before I leave the craft and then you know it dries overnight and I go back the next morning. Right now, I'm doing it, and I'm just lightly dry brushing the pink again to correct that so that everything looks nice and matched. This is some of the pink burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and it was a little bit darker than I wanted for this craft. So I went ahead and did the dry brush technique on the ribbon. I don't know if you guys know you can do that. It actually creates a very soft, kind of mystical, blurry, very pretty look when you're all done. I, you just use white paint. You can use cream paint too, but it's very effective if you don't have the right color or you, or you just want a distressed look on the ribbon. It, it looks really pretty and it works really well with burlap. And I just wrapped this around my egg and glued it. I didn't wrap it all the way around to save ribbon. I only go a little bit around the back and I glue it. There you go, you can see it right there. And then I tacked the front down with a little bit of hot glue so that it doesn't wiggle. And now I'm using the Dollar Tree lace ribbon. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm gonna glue it on either side, and then I'm gonna tack it in the front down with a little bit of hot glue again so that it doesn't move. And this is what it looks like so far. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my little embellishments. I'm using some Dollar Tree pink flowers that I found. It's really, really soft. And some of the Dollar Tree roses that come in a bag during, I think they were out during Valentine's and I think they're still out now. I saw them the other day. I don't know if it's in every Dollar Tree, but they were in the one that I was in. And I decided to keep it really simple. With this DIY, I wanted everything muted, everything soft, less is more. That's the beauty in this. I really wanted to kind of make it look like that Hobby Lobby craft or a craft you would find at Kirkland's. So I just really went light with that, not too many embellishments. And I'm doing the wooden beads. I get my wooden beads from Amazon. They are down below in my description box and we're all done. And I love this, I think it came up beautiful. For 
For the next project, I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm having to turn my tile diagonally and I'm really concentrating on getting that pretty center design as close to the middle of the carrot as I can. And I'm cutting it out, gluing it down, and then I'm gonna add some paint. That's pretty much the whole video is cutting out and gluing down and trimming and then painting. But these tiles really are a game changer. And I thought this was an original idea. I was so excited when I thought of it. And I went on Pinterest to upload some photos to my Pinterest and there it was. When I put in Easter decor right in my feed there, up came these tiles someone had done a bunny. So my DIYs don't look anything like what I saw. So hopefully I'll give you guys new fresh ideas, but they really are amazing. I love these. They make everything that you put them on look super expensive and decorative. I love them. So the first color I did was a dark orange and then I did a lighter orange. I just used pumpkin orange, I believe in the apple barrel paint. And then the lighter color was just a peachy orange. Any orange will work. It doesn't have to be these colors, but I wanted a dark undertone because a little bit of the darker orange is showing through the lighter orange and now i'm taking some antique parchment apple barrel and i'm doing dry brushing again to bring out those beautiful designs on the tile So for me, what I wanted to do with this DIY, that top just wasn't going to work. I stared at it probably for about 15 minutes and I finally went, nope. It, it would just make the top part flare out too much. So it's super easy, you guys. You just take a utility knife, mine's from the Dollar Tree, and you score back and forth. I think I only did it three times and then it cracks right off just like you saw, super simple. And I think it's going to provide a much nicer top now for the rest of the DIY. So I'm taking some Spanish moss, I'm gluing it on the top. And I do give this a little haircut to make it a little bit thinner at the top as well. And then I glue down one pick that I got from Amazon. This is Boxwood. Again, the link down below in my description box. Everything I'm using, I try to put in my description box so you guys can get it too, or at least see what I used. And I put some tape on top of that as well, just for extra, you saw me do that. I usually glue my florals down or my hangers, and then I will put tape over it while the glue's still hot so that there's an extra hold there. And I'm taking some raffia again. I got that at well, I got that on Amazon. I couldn't find it in the Dollar Tree. Um, I don't know if, if all of you are noticing there's no raffia in the Dollar Trees, but I hit three Dollar Trees. There was no raffia, so we ordered it. Really happy with the one that I got. And then I'm taking and making some bows now. Now, I do have a video, excellent video, that's time-stamped. I pretty much include every bow I've ever made, including some more that I haven't made really nice fancy bows called 10 easy Christmas bows. It's down below in my description box. If you want to check out how to make my bows, that video covers everything. Again, it's time stamped, So you can just go to the bow that you're interested in and click on the little time and it'll take you right to it. So I'm gluing down my raffia bow. And all I did with this other bow is just use the Dollar Tree um, burlap ribbon with the lace and the Dollar Tree gingham print one that's orange and I glued two loops together and then crisscrossed them. And now I'm adding the Dollar Tree little bunny because I think this is so cute. It's a great theme with the carrot. And that's it. We're gonna glue a hanger on the back using some nautical rope. And I hate to say I always love my DIYs. I mean, some DIYs I don't love as much as I love others. But thanks to these tiles, I can honestly say all of these in this video came up stunning. <music> What you're looking at here are three tiki masala jars from Aldi's and those are great. You put them in the dishwasher and the label comes right off in one complete piece so it doesn't break up in pieces and there's no goo left behind at all on the jar. Super easy to do. So that's what I did. And these tiles, as you saw, they have four quadrants with this little design in it. And I had an idea that I would like to put this design on the jar. So that was going to be a bit challenging since these are plastic tiles and they, you know, they're not bendy. They're, they bend, but they're kind of resistant. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cut them down. I'm going really slow here so you can see exactly what line I chose to cut at. And for those of you that love to blend crosses in with your Easter decor, these definitely could pass for a very pretty cross. They kind of have a medieval look or an Italian look, maybe even French country. They're very pretty. Now I'm using tape to glue them down because these definitely will not stick to any kind of shiny surface, even with the strongest hot glue. I think even with a regular glue, they might be resistant. So you definitely need something down on the jar. Now I didn't have any duct tape, but if I did it again, I probably would use duct tape. They did hold and they're holding just fine, but I'm just giving you guys, you know, a better tip, I guess, if you don't want to deal with them coming off. A stickier tape with a nice sticky surface would work really, really good. If you only have masking tape, you can use masking tape, it does work. And I'm just covering all of the masking tape. So I put it in a cross shape and then I go crisscross as well to make sure that there's plenty of surface for these tiles to stick down on. They do get hot. They conduct heat, so be careful when you're pressing them. I did burn myself when I was doing these. So all of them are done right there. That's what they look like. And I'm just going to put some white acrylic paint on. Again, this isn't chalk paint. It's nothing fancy. It's just acrylic paint. I don't mind if they look a little streaky because I like that distressed look. If you want a real solid white color, you could you know, turn to chalk paint or even milk paint or a latex paint would give you a more solid look. Or you could do two coats of the acrylic paint. Now I'm using the color Nutmeg Brown to bring out this design. I just thought that looked really kind of just earthy and just perfect for what I was trying. This is the look I was trying. I had a vision and it definitely came out the way I was envisioning. I'm also taking my brush and making sure I'm doing the edges of that tile as well to make sure they pop see that and you can see it I thought that looked really nice now to make sure that these stayed on my jar I go ahead and take some of the Dollar Tree twine I put a dot of hot glue in the front and I wrap it around just twice and then I glue it back in the front again because we're going to go ahead and put some front embellishment so you won't see this I actually loved the way that looked but if you use duct tape and a stronger industrial glue to hold the tiles down. You probably wouldn't have to do this step. I like it. I may have done it anyway, even if I had used a stronger glue. It looks really pretty, but I'm just letting you know you don't have to do that step if you don't want to. And now I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree twine that is decorative. We just got those packages at my Dollar Tree. I was really surprised and pleased. They come in different designs. I'm using the top one for the top part of the lid. So on the on the little panel there, there's three rows. I'm using the top one for the lid here, and then I'm gonna use the bottom one for the bows in a minute here. And we're just doing the hot glue in the back. Everything's going in the back of these jars because you're not gonna see the back when they're up in my home. So now you can see what I was talking about. See how there's three different designs. The top one is on the top of the jar and the bottom one is going to be the loops for the bow. And I just went with where it naturally bended from being wrapped around that cardboard as my measurement. So that's the measurement for the loops. I glued them together, I'm going to cut them, and I made two for each jar. So for this part here, I'm just going to take each loop and glue them at a crisscross, so kind of like an X, I guess, to make my bow on the front. So I'm using the little Dollar Tree bunnies again. They come in a package. I held them up to these jars and the front of them with the tail is too dark. It just kind of got lost, I thought, in the craft. I wanted them to pop a little bit more. So I took the tails off of them and I turned them upside down. And now we have the light cut. See how much you can how much more you can see them? So they would be visible, I guess, from far away and you'd be able to tell they're bunnies. So I'm just using the Walmart lavender now. All I do with the lavender is I just bend that stem at the bottom and then it springs, you know, it wants to come straight again. So it springs out and it holds flowers nice and tight in jars without having to use any foam. And we're all done.
This next one is my husband's favorite. Now the thing with these tiles too is they're only sticky on the edge. So when you cut the edges off, the sticker part just falls off. And I'm after the paper there because I don't have any white butcher paper or wax paper. I actually don't have any paper in the house right now that I could use for this. And I didn't want to use computer paper because it would tear. And I noticed when I was working with this tile that the paper on the back was super, super strong. And I knew I'd be able to bend it and press my pen into it and make a nice little template for this tray. So I bent the template in half and that's just to make sure that the edges around the corners are exactly even. So we have symmetry on both sides of the template. Now tracing this was a little tricky. I had to kind of rub back and forth with my pen because it's bumpy, <laughs> but it works and I got it done and now I'm just cutting it out. And just a reminder, in case you missed it in the early part of the video, this is Sure Bonder glue. It's made for multiple surfaces. It's just stronger than the normal glue. So this is holding really, really well. Everything I made is holding really, really well. And well, you, I, you could actually use the duct tape trick or the masking tape trick with this as well. It would work. So if you don't have stronger hot glue than Dollar Tree hot glue, you could absolutely use the duct tape trick. It would work just fine. So I went ahead and painted this with acrylic white paint, and now I'm doing the antique parchment to bring out the design. I decided to keep this in a nice light Easter, light and bright for Easter or a French country. This tray is so pretty. You could do so many different things with it. If you don't glue anything down and you just kind of tape everything on, you could make this work for different seasons and different seasonal decor. It's just a super, super high-end looking tray when you do this. Now I started off putting wax on this little bunny and it wasn't working out very well. So I turned to Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel Paint and painted it and painted it until it kind of dried on purpose and some of the paint was sliding and moving around because I wanted him to look distressed and kind of have markings on him more like a bunny would because bunnies don't have just a solid streaky, you know, I just didn't want it to be streaks of paint. I wanted it to have exactly how it came out there to the right. So it worked. And I'm just taping this ribbon on the back because like I said, I may change this out for some other decor or other seasons in my home. And I didn't want to commit, well, as much as possible, I do end up having to glue the flowers down <laughs> because they weren't staying, but I can always touch up just the edge of the tray, no problem. Here I go, I'm gluing them down. And I'm using the boxwood from Amazon and a rose from Walmart. Those are very, very beautiful. So the rose I'm gluing on the left-hand side and the right-hand side there, those come from the Dollar Tree. And I decide I want a little bit more greenery, some vines behind in the back. So I just tape those down. I'm trying to use as much tape as possible. I do glue the hanger down, but we're all done. I'm using the Dollar Tree Wooden Bunny for this next DIY, and I just traced the tile out. I did remove a little wooden tail that he had on the back side there, and I end up gluing him where he's facing to the left. I don't know what it was. I was going to do the back side of him, but I just didn't like the way he looked facing to the right. And I think it's because I saw something very similar where I actually got my inspiration for these tiles came from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby has a bunny with these kind of designs on that look almost identical. And I thought, oh my gosh, you could do that with a Dollar Tree tile. And there it is right there. So there's these little pieces on the front of him that are kind of 3D on his ears. Don't be intimidated by that at all. It still sticks just fine. If anything, it actually makes it look more expensive because it kind of makes his ears look thicker. Like they kind of puff out a little bit. So it looks like a metal piece. It looks really awesome. So don't worry about that at all. You can go ahead and glue it down. You probably do need to take the tail off though in order to do it. Even if you want to put the tail back on, it'll be in the way if you don't. So I'm just using some Dollar Tree ribbon here. It's some of the pink burlap again, some Easter ribbon that I found in the Easter section that has very distinct Easter markings, which I thought would be so cute for Mr. Bunny, and some of the gingham print. I 
I made a bunch of loops and I tied them together with the twine. That's it. And we're just shaping the bow. We're gonna stick it on the front. I also made a little bow out of the raffia. I'm gonna glue that on top and I'm gonna glue some boxwood around his neck to add a little bit of greenery. I really want this to look like the Hobby Lobby one, so he does need a stand. This is a piece of wood that actually came inside a shelving unit that I bought. There was just random wood in it, about four pieces, so I have four of these, and I try to use everything I have. I'm using some of the towering blocks to glue at the back. I do three all together. I just stack them on top and glue them against his back. So there's a wooden tail. I just wanted to show it to you so you can see what it looks like and what it would look like if you wanted to use it. You could paint it silver and maybe put some pearlescent on it and it would look pretty or white if you do a white bunny. Um, like me, but I'm going with the Dollar Tree pom-pom. I think that's so so cute for his little tail And I'm gonna paint my base white as well Lastly, I decide to use a little Dollar Tree pearl They come in bags to cover the rest of the twine and this is how he came out this next DIY I'm using three of the Dollar Tree wooden eggs and one of their silver trays I love those silver trays they're actually very heavy when you not well they're not super heavy but they have weight to them and they feel like good quality and when you fix them up they look so nice and they feel nice I love working with them so I'm doing now what I've been doing the entire video I'm just tracing cutting gluing it down we're gonna make three eggs and again I was really careful about the design I chose an area of the tile and I wanted that design you see right there centered right in the egg so those crosses those like lines there kind of crisscross in a cross shape on each egg next I'm gonna go ahead and take the apple barrel white paint and give this tray uh, one coat now I was surprised because I really thought because I didn't rough it up or sand it up the paint would chip when I did my next step but it didn't I'm really really pleased it held up so you know just passing that on so you guys know let it dry thoroughly of course and these are the two colors I'm gonna work on with the eggs so we're gonna dry brush them I'm gonna do two pink ones and one purple one these are my favorite paint sticks they're down below in my description box they're off of Amazon for those of you that watch my channel you know I love working with these because they don't have that weird little shape at the top they're just straight so I took them downstairs and I cut them with a handsaw I just taped them together with masking tape and I used a nail file to file the edges so there's no sharp little splinters and I'm taking watered down wax you can use any wax you want you could even use watered down brown paint for this next part now this is the part I was talking about where it stood up because this is very watery and you know how wax gets kind of sticky as it dries I was worried that the acrylic paint would lift off and it didn't it held its own so I was really really pleased about that look how beautiful that came out we're just giving it a quick blow dry and now I'm taking the antique parchment color and we're gonna do a dry brush over the top of that and we end up with a beautiful wood look I absolutely I'm saying I love these trays they are so fun to work with that looks like a solid heavy it feels like a heavy wood frame now or tray so pretty and I took the paint sticks I also gave them a dry brush as well I wanted those to be lighter so that the eggs will pop but I wanted it to look like real wood underneath and the natural color of the paint stick was a little bit too light so I'm using this little pink zigzag ribbon here I don't know if there's a word for this kind of ribbon I didn't look I'm sorry but I thought it looked very Easter like and I'm just gluing them in the center and I made these are all dollar uh, tree ribbon as well and I made two purple polka dot white polka dot bows and one pink bow with white polka dots put them on the opposite color eggs now I'm just gluing the paint sticks inside so it looks like the whole tray is wood 
I also glued some pink little flowers in the center of those bows and I'm gonna glue the eggs down on top of the wood and we're all done. <laughs> next DIY is actually my favorite DIY today in this video. I have these seed starter pots that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use one of them for the bottom of this little candle tray here you find in the candle section but I'm also showing you that you can use a applesauce cup if you have an applesauce cup. Anything like that would be just fine and I have the wooden birdhouse from the Dollar Tree as well. I tried to pull out the rope but it turns out there's a big knot on the bottom of that rope so I just take my pencil and I push it through the other way and then I'm going to give the birdhouse a shake and it comes out. So that's how you get that off. And then I didn't have any spackling. I didn't have any, what is the other one, joint compound. So I had, well I used what I had. I had this Dollar Tree caulking and I'm just using my fingers and putting it sideways. You can see right there and I sweep it again right there and that creates that little peak you need at the top so that it matches the rest of the roof. And now I'm just using some hot glue for this part. This is Sure Bonder hot glue that's supposed to be good for glass. So I figured it should work, we're gonna see. <laughs> and I know some of you are intimidated or not big believers that you can paint with acrylic paint on glass. And you can, I've been doing it for 25 years. It's really not about what kind of paint you put on the glass, it's really about whether or not you're going to seal it. So if you seal it, it's going to stay just fine. Now the trouble you will run into when you paint acrylic paint on anything shiny, and I'll be honest, is if your fingers have some paint on and you're holding it, you'll lift the paint off. Or if it starts to dry a little bit and you keep sweeping back and forth, back and forth, you'll lift the paint off. So you have to move quick. It's a one-time opportunity there, it's one chance. You gotta move quick, put a good coat on, and you don't go back once it starts to dry, you leave it. And once it's dry, you can go ahead and seal it and it will stay just fine. Now, I've also had people tell me you can use Mod Podge, but I'm gonna show you something from a previous video I did during fall 2021. This is Mod Podge on glass. So I didn't like the way it looked. So all I did was take this little blade and you're gonna see that I just lift it off. It really is a sheet of plastic. There I go. So that's not really a secure way either. Yes, your paint will stick to the Mod Podge, but your Mod Podge won't stick to the glass any better than it would, you know, any better than the acrylic paint would. Now, another trick I've heard is that you can spray it first with a varnish or spray paint or something like that, and your acrylic paint will stick to that. Well, yes, but that's if you wanna do two processes unnecessarily, because if you're careful the way you paint your acrylic paint, you have to seal it because it will chip off too easy if it's on glass. Um, you're gonna spray that on anyway, and once it's sealed, it's kind of a mute point. In other words, you'll be doing a varnish to get it to stick, and then you'll have to seal it again because it still will chip off. Either way, you need to seal your acrylic paint. I hope that makes sense. And if it didn't, please feel free to ask me any questions you need to down below in the comments. It's just, I always like to craft on an extreme budget and any materials that aren't necessarily necessary is in my mind anyway, it's wasteful because I'm budget friendly that way. So there's no point spraying your glass with this, the Mod Podge acrylic sealer, and then painting it when you have to just go out and seal it anyway. And once you seal it, it's gonna be just fine without the sealant. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> it's like a step that you don't need to do. As long as you're holding it carefully, painting quickly, letting it dry very thoroughly in between coats, it, it holds up just fine for the look. So I went ahead and I glued a raffia bow on the pink birdhouse. I put some of the Dollar Tree moss around the bottom here, some Dollar Tree little roses. I'm just gonna do like a little spring scene at the bottom because I thought that was so cute. But I absolutely love the way this DIY came out. I honestly think this is perfect home decor for French country or shabby chic, even farmhouse because it is Easter and these are Easter colors. And I'm showing you that pick from Walmart again, great deal and we're all done.
For this next DIY, I went ahead and took a Dollar Tree shaped egg, you know, those egg plaques you can buy, and I traced it on cardboard because I love to challenge myself with cardboard to see if I can make high-end looking decor using cardboard because, of course, cardboard is the cheapest way you can go when you're crafting, and it's super, super satisfying if you can make it look amazing. And most of us have access to free cardboard boxes at some point, so it's always my, you know, favorite one of my favorite things to do so I decided I wanted to see if I could stain cardboard I thought why not papers would and cardboard's definitely a step up from paper so I took watered down wax you, you can use any antique wax you want and I'm just doing the first coat because I want to see how it takes with water you know mixed in and it's really slippery and slidey that's why I chose the wax and there's not that much water in it but I chose this over paint, although I think you could probably do paint if you keep your, you know, if you do a dry brush technique. I've shown that in many videos. You can make anything look like wood if you get really good with dry brushing and using different colors. But back to this, I'm drying it now to assess where we're at to kind of take a look and see what color I'm getting. And while it's drying and I'm watching it, I'm taking these bunnies that I found at the Dollar Tree. They have like a little stake on the end of them and I just cut it off with my scissors, but I want to go ahead and stain the bunny while I have the wax out because I knew I was gonna go ahead and move to using wax that's not diluted straight out of the bottle. So I want to get everybody stained before I put everything away. So I just take the brush, stain my little wood bunny, and I also want to compare the bunny that's wood side by side to the egg to see if it looks the same because that's the look I'm trying to get, right? Stained wood. I take a little bit of tissue, I wipe the excess off, and you can see there, you can see it. I don't know if you said it was really fast, but you can actually see that the bunny is extremely close to the egg. You can see it right there in the upper left-hand corner too. I mean, they pretty much look the same, but I wanted a little bit more wood grain in there. So, and interestingly enough, the bunny doesn't have a visible wood grain, but I still thought that would be pretty for the egg because the egg does have those little creases where it bent, even though this is really thick cardboard that I can't bend, I think maybe it got banged around or something happened where it had these natural little creases and I just felt that made it look more like wood. So I'm using undiluted wax, dry brushing it on, and then I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm using just my pointer finger, just one finger, and I'm just kind of strategically going through the wax and streaking it on purpose to make it look like wood grain. Now I'm gonna cover most of this egg and I knew that, that's why this was a perfect thing to practice on. I'm really only concerned about the very top looking like wood and look at that, it actually, the very top there where the lines are, the top of the egg, I don't know why I'm showing you the bottom of it, but. <laughs> because it was the top that I wanted to focus on, but it does. So I think, well, wow, I wonder if I can sand this too, just like wood with a nail file. Eh, you can kind of, it's not as good as cutting it because it does get like little hairs on the edge. So that's not as good. But now I have this lace doily from the Dollar Tree as well. It comes in a package of two. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cover the lower half of this egg with the lace doily. One of the things I have spoken about before is how important it is to cover the edge of cardboard if you're going to use cardboard to do your crafts because obviously, right, if you can see the side of the cardboard hanging on the wall, that's gonna look really cheap and nasty. So you can do it different ways. I will often take for all year round decor and glue four of these. So I would have cut out four eggs, glued them all together, taken spackling and put it along the side and then stain the spackling. That looks awesome. That looks like a super heavy, nice plaque. You can also use parts of baskets. You know, there's a Dollar Tree basket that I've taken apart before and you can use, it comes in natural colors. There's one that was out last year that was natural basket color and then one that was kind of stained. Either one of those, depending on what craft you're doing, make excellent covers for the side of your crafts. That metal ribbon that Dollar Tree sells also makes wonderful coverings, the leather ribbon that Dollar Tree sells. So there I'm showing you those two lines. Look at how awesome that looks. That really does look like wood for what it's worth. I mean, it, it might as well have been a wood Dollar Tree, you know, sign. But the one thing that I did do that I regretted, I still love the way this came out, but I made all of that effort and then I went and glued a bow on the top. And of course, because it was cardboard, there's no going back. If you tear that off, you'll damage it. But if you make this craft, 
I would suggest that you consider putting the bow on the bottom of the egg and not on the top and just doing all the pretty ribbons hanging down from the bottom of the egg and then glue more of them together or use twine or nautical rope or something around the edge of the egg to cover the side but so you can show off your wood grain you know if you get it you know if you're rocking it it's looking really good (laughs) it just doesn't make sense to cover it up with a bow and flowers so I guess if this was a Dollar Tree sign, I would have decorated it this way, but I really want to show off the wood grain. Anyway, that is a pick from Walmart. They are out right now as I speak, and you know I don't know if they'll be there a week from now, but they're 97 cents, and they're absolutely gorgeous. Now, I wanted you guys to see the bunny in the center there. I was going to consider putting it in the center and just gluing it there, and I wanted your opinion, but I ended up deciding to go ahead and glue the bunny to the center of the Dollar Tree egg, thread some wooden beads, and then make him look like he's hanging off the wooden beads from the twine. So here's something I did that's kind of unusual. To close up the twine in a loop shape, I just put a little dot of hot glue on the tip of it and then pushed it back up inside the bead and that did the trick because this is very lightweight, it's not anything heavy, so it was just for the look. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tack down the bunny with a little bit of glue so that he's hanging nice you know what he looks like he's hanging nice because sometimes things don't always hang exactly the way you want them to (laughs) so I tack it down and I also added a little bit of ribbon tail there so that does the job of covering up the side of the cardboard but it also like I said I cover all the wood Oh well, I take some nautical rope, hot glue it on the back, secure it with a bit of masking tape while it's hot so the masking tape kind of melts into it, and then I tack my little egg ornament down and we're all done. I do think this came out very beautiful and I'd love to know what you guys think. For this DIY, I found this really pretty fabric at Walmart. I believe they were $2 each, and it's very generous. You get quite a bit. I have a pattern for a bunny. That's a free printable. You'll find it down below in my description box. And I got this quilting from Amazon. Now, if you don't have something like that, I'm showing you this foam that I got in an Amazon package and it was for free. It came protecting something and I kept it. That would also work for this craft as well. You could also use cotton balls. And we're gonna have to iron. (laughs) That's the nice thing about buying the cloth on the roll. You don't have to iron, but when you buy it folded up like this, you have to iron. So I'm showing you my new iron that I got. I finally splurged on a really nice iron and we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of water. And I just folded a sheet down It was a queen size sheet and I just folded it down so that I protect my tabletop there and gave it everything a quick iron so there's no wrinkles. There's our pattern, our little bunny that I chose and I'm gonna cut him out. And then I'm gonna trace him on some cardboard and we're gonna cut out three cardboard shapes. I was gonna just stuff these bunnies and then after examining the batting that I have, the quilt batting, I decided that it was a little bit thinner than I wanted and I wasn't sure they were going to be able to lean up very well or stand up very well. So for this year, we're going to go ahead and put some cardboard in between the batting. So we're going to have cardboard and then we're going to have the batting on either side of the cardboard. So all I did here, it's pretty self-explanatory, is I just glue the batting down and then I put, you know, I, I just put it on both sides of the bunny and I do that for all three bunnies. When it came to gluing the material together, I just kept my glue very, very close right along the edge of the cardboard, and then I pressed in with my nails to make sure that the seam was as close to the cardboard and the batting as possible. And then I just take my scissors when I'm all done, and I'm gonna give these guys a trim. Using a Dollar Tree lace ribbon, I'm gonna put bows on these guys. Now, last year when I put a bow on a bunny with two little tails, because I'm using the Dollar Tree pom-poms here for the tail, and as you can see, I want the two there to have bows on the opposite sides of their neck, and then the middle one is kind of, you know, I love the little bunny faces. He's kind of my favorite, that material, so the bow's in the center. But I had some people come on and say, you can't put bows on 
the back, that's the back of them. And I thought, well, why not? Because I used to have a Shih Tzu. And when I took him to get bathed, he would come out with a little bow on the back of his neck. So, <laughs> oh, and my cats, well, not me, my mother, she used to take our cats in to get bathed. To be fair to my mother, she only did it twice because they were very unhappy. <laughs> but they also came back with bows on the back of their necks. So if you want to leave them off, you can. I think that looks cute too. Definitely if you're doing like a rustic or a primitive look, that would be great. But I love the little bows on the side of their neck or on the back and I still see this as the back of the bunny. But anyway, as always, I would love to know what you guys think. They're all done. They were super fun to make. They make great accent pieces around the house. You can put them wherever you want on console tables, floating shelves. They're just super fun and they add a lot of festive energy to your environment. For this DIY, I took a Dollar Tree jar, they come with a lid, and I made this free printable. I thought it was really, really cute. And this is another free printable, the roses, that you can use along with this. You can skip that one if you want, but I just wanted to decorate the lid. And I discovered that the masking tape roll at the Dollar Tree is the perfect shape to use to trace the circle for this lid. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful, I hope it is. And I'm gonna use the Elmer's um, glue stick to glue this down. I pretty much use a glue stick for everything and I have done it before on shiny surfaces and I've been really really pleased. Again, not super critical what you use to glue it down as long as it's a decent adhesive but it is critical if it's going to be handled a lot and get wear and tear you know, you're going to be touching it that you use a good sealant whether that's a spray or whether that's Mod Podge. In this case I went ahead and I used Mod Podge. Now you'll see that I do put the Mod Podge a little bit over the edge of the label and then I take a baby wipe and wipe around as straight as I can just so there's like a little sliver of Mod Podge hanging over the paper on every single edge to seal it in because I'm going to be touching it a little bit and I might pick it up and I don't want it to come off. But I'm not a big fan of covering the entire glass with Mod Podge for the reason that I showed you in the previous clip. <laughs> it just, for me, it looks streaky and you can, it peels off. It just gets to be too much. You could also definitely spray a varnish on this. That would work too. And I have to be honest, there has been quick crafts that I've done that have just been meant like just to stay up for a season and I didn't seal you know, it was on glass or something shiny and I did seal it with Mod Podge and it still stayed on. So here you can see it with a lid. It's a beautiful decorative jar. And then here it is as a vase. Here's a craft I've seen for a while and I've always wanted to make one. We're going to do it with a poster board from the Dollar Tree. Now I know there's videos out there that show you how to cut the perfect cone and I suggest you search for them on YouTube because you know I've always done it this way because I just like to get things done fast. <laughs> but I know there's another way to do this. I just roll it till it looks like a cone and then I glue it down. I put it on my surface right there to see if it's uneven or if it's standing up straight. And if it is uneven or I need to make any adjustments, I'll cut it again at the bottom until I get it right. So now I'm just putting my final strip of hot glue on the edge there to seal that edge down nice and tight so that we have a nice cone shape to work with. Now I was worried with this DIY that it would be too too light because as you can see we are using foam eggs and they don't have a lot of weight to them. I was wrong. You, de <laughs> you definitely do not have to worry about it being light. By the time you put all the hot glue on to hold everything on, this becomes a very weighty 
little tree. So don't worry about that. Now I bought the garland from Dollar Tree because at the time in the Dollar Tree that I was in, that was the biggest bang for your buck in getting the most foam eggs. I wanted foam eggs because I happen to absolutely love the texture of these when they're painted. I think they kind of look like cement or concrete. They, they have a rough look to them and I think it's really pretty and has, I guess, the illusion of making things look heavier. They definitely don't look plastic. I didn't want to paint plastic eggs because I was worried they might look like plastic. <laughs> so I stuck with the foam ones. And all I'm gonna do now is start at the bottom of this cone shape and start gluing these eggs around the bottom, working my way to the top. Now I'm showing this part on purpose. See while the glue is drying how I'm kind of pushing the cone down. That also helps it take a nice round shape because I did kind of squish it a little bit flat when I was cutting it. So that brought it back around again because I did that every single time I pressed the eggs down. I just kind of pushed it in the opposite direction if that was the area where the crease was and it worked brilliantly. So that's one way to kind of counter that. Now here's what I did with the eggs. I like the color green. I don't want to change it. But of course I don't like the glitter and I want it to look more like, you know, cement. So I just did a dry brush of white paint on each of the green eggs to make it a nice pastel matte egg. The next step I did was I painted the pink eggs pink in a nice pastel color and I used a nice pastel color blue, both apple barrel paints, to paint the eggs. Any pastel blue would work, any pastel pink would work. If you want to know exactly what color I use, just drop me a comment down below and I will find out. And here I'm showing you what happens when you mess up. Ignore the twine that got stuck on the <laughs> baby wipe. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but that is how you handle it. If you put too much white paint on, don't panic. Just take a baby wipe and start wiping it off and you will get that nice, soft, misty, hazy white look nothing will go wrong so don't panic it works just fine and just keep going so i went ahead and i ended up dry brushing all of these with white because when it dried the blue and the pink actually dried a little darker and against the green it just didn't have that pretty look and i realized it didn't have that pretty look because I had dry brushed the green. The next step was to take the moss from the Dollar Tree and glue it in between everywhere. And this is where I was talking about weight. I used hot glue and I got a tremendous amount of weight. And for the top there, you just squeeze it. You squeeze you know, your um, moss around to make sure it takes the cone shape. And I have to be honest, that did take a lot of time putting it in between the eggs, but the results were incredibly beautiful, so it was worth it. Now I'm taking some of that tissue paper from, well, this is Hallmark, it's from Amazon. I got a really good deal on it, and I'm just putting it in a little pink bucket I found at the Dollar Tree. By the way, this is one of those buckets that say the flower phrase on, you know, the, the silver ones that are at the Dollar Tree, and I found them in this Dollar Tree that was amazing. It had so many things I've never seen before, and they had them in pink. So I'm just putting some Spanish moss on top. I'm going to just glue this down because this is indoors. If you think you're going to put this outside, get a Dollar Tree plunger and glue it in the center, and then glue your plunger down inside your bucket and add rocks for weight to make sure it doesn't blow away but mine's just going to be inside so it's not going to go anywhere next i'm adding a raffia bow on the top because it was missing a little something all i did was tie a bow twice there to get four loops all together this is one of my favorites let me know what you guys think I'm super excited to share this next DIY with you because it came out way better than what I actually thought and anyone can make this. So I grabbed the Dollar Tree little bunny head, those wooden ones, I traced it on cardboard, cut the cardboard out and then put it down to trace on a Dollar Tree mop head and now I'm cutting it out. Last time I was at the Dollar Tree, I grabbed this easel, little 
wooden easel type thing and one of those chalkboard signs and I'm gonna go ahead and stain them now I'm using watered down folk art antique wax you can use any wax you want. I also really like this water-based stain. It's a acrylic stain. I have it listed down below in my description box, but it's unscented and super slippery, so anything will work. I've been favoring the wax lately because when you water it down, a little bit goes a long way. And I, again, I'm always a bargain shopper, so I think the wax would actually last 10 times as long as the water-based stain, to be honest. So I've been using that for most applications lately because I can't imagine I would, you know, I craft, as you know, all the time, and I use the wax all the time. And I still have three quarters of my wax left. It's amazing. If you water it down, it goes and goes and goes. So great deal. Get it on Amazon, folk art. I put the link down below in my description box. You can find it there if you're wondering exactly which one I'm using. And all I did was glue that little bunny head down. And then I took some Dollar Tree ribbon and I made two bows. One's a little bit bigger than the other one. And I glued the smaller one in the center. I had leftover carrots from the little carrot DIY I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the carrots down underneath this little head. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue the bow down in the middle of him right there or her. <laughs> I guess you could, it could be either. And just on the right hand side of the ribbon, I glued that down. I was thinking about doing it on the left side, but I didn't. And I decided to cut the purple bow down just a little bit shorter to show off the tips of the carrots more. Next, I took the Dollar Tree pom-poms and I cut them down. And that's just how I roll. If I don't have something, I will make it work. I will find something in the house, something to make my craft work. That's what I've always done. So Dollar Tree pom-poms, that's all I could find with the bigger ones. And I just cut them down. Now you can't cut them in half. If you do that, they'll unravel. <laughs> I did discover that. But I cut two small ones and then one that's a little bit tinier than the other two small ones. So I can paint it pink and that's going to be his nose. And I'm just using some Dollar Tree tweezers here that I kind of pushed up in the center of this pom-pom so that I could be sure to get the paint all the way around it and hold it nice and firm. These are also Dollar Tree little eyes from the Crafter's Square Isle and little whiskers. Now this is twine that came from the eggs that I bought that are meant to hang as ornaments with holes in them. When you buy those little wooden things that are in a package, they'll often come with bent twine in there that's super super thin save that it makes great whiskers and it also makes great ties to tie a middle of a bow so that it's not as noticeable as well and you can see what i'm doing here i'm just gluing the pom-poms down where i want them to be i'm going to trim his whiskers a little unevenly on purpose to make them look more realistic <laughs> I don't know, there's something about that guy. He has the same energy as my sweet little cat, Thomas. So I can't help but giggle. I absolutely love this DIY. I'm using a chalk marker, but first I write it, all of my words. I always do this in pencil because I'm not that good at writing freehand. I'm not confident, so I like to do it in pencil first. And I just wrote hop, hop, hop. And it's so cute for Easter. Check that out. I love this one. Okay, so this is the free printable for the next DIY, but in this video, I'm also going to show you how to do this free printable because so many people have asked. This is a program called OpenOffice. It's a free download online. It's the program that I use for this process. And it doesn't show, now I'm screen recording right now, and what you can't see is the desktop behind this. It's just black to the right, but I've actually minimized this window so that I can see my desktop and see my printable that I've downloaded onto my desktop. And now I've dragged that into the program and then made it big again. So now it's covering my entire computer screen. And you can see there how it has those corners, all those little green little dots. That allows you to drag it and make it any size you want. You can make it long and skinny, you can make it short and fat, 
but look how easy that is. So most of what I do is by eye. I don't measure anything. I just have a feel for how big the computer paper is and about how big it's going to look when it prints up. And sometimes I make mistakes and I have to go back and do it again, but this is how I do it. So this program has a feature called print preview. It's right there. You couldn't see me drop down the menu again. The screen recording has limitations, but I'm looking at it and here I can see that it's going to be a little bit too big for my project. So I actually go back and make these words just a little bit smaller because I can tell they, you know, I'm cutting it close, but that's how you do that. And I hope you found that helpful. And more good news, later in the same DIY, I'm going to show you the entire tissue paper printing process as well. I got these Dollar Tree eggs. They come in packages of two. I bought two of them all together, so I have four eggs. I'm going to go ahead and paint all of them white. I'm using white acrylic paint. This is Apple Barrel paint. I think Apple Barrel has picked up their game since I used to use Apple Barrel paint years ago because I used to have to do more than one coat. And I noticed lately I'm having really good luck with one coat. So I don't know if they've changed their formula. Has anybody else noticed this out there? I just I wondered if it was just me, but I'm having, that's one coat right there. So that's pretty impressive. But I went ahead and painted all four. I end up using only three, but I figure I'm going to use it for another DIY anyway. The next step, you grab some water and some tissue that you would blow your nose with. And it comes in two ply. If it's three ply, you peel it apart till you get to one ply. And you lay that down. I showed this last year. It's a fantastic quick hack to get fake wood. And you just start squirting it with water and it will start creasing up and wrinkling. You can manipulate it a little bit. You can see me doing it here by patting it down. You don't want to move the Kleenex too much because you might actually make it flat. And pull out the creases that you're making. So you definitely want to do this. It's a fragile process. If you make a mistake, you just take the Kleenex off, dry it off and start again. Now I'm using spray on purple adhesive. Any adhesive would work. I just like the purple one because it allows me to see where I've sprayed and where I missed. And it also lets me see when it's dry because it turns clear when it's dry. So now I'm just using some of the raffia that I got from Amazon to make little raffia bows. I had planned on doing this whether there was a hole at the top of the egg or not, but just so happens there's a hole, which I also want to cover, so it works out well. And I'm taking the utility knife from the Dollar Tree to carve out those lines again and make sure that you can see the shiplap. So I don't have a scoring tool right now, you guys, so I improvise. <laughs> It's a utility knife for now. So that was drying while I was doing all of that. And now it's dry. And I'm going to go ahead and take the utility knife to cut off most of the dried tissue. It's really easy to do because it's really stiff by now. And then I'm taking a coarse nail file, the kind you would use with artificial acrylic nails. And I'm just going to go ahead and well, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just sanding the edges to remove the rest of the tissue paper. And then I'm going to take some more of that white acrylic apple barrel paint and paint the front of this. Next, using the color Nutmeg Brown and Apple Barrel Paint, we're going to lightly dry brush this to bring out the little designs that make it look like wood. Now, if you want to make it look like a birch wood, you can add some gray in there. I love pewter gray, but any gray would work. I have a great video on a DIY birch wood. You can see that on my channel, in my channel video lineup if you want, but it is a really fun on trend look. And I know I this is kind of like a long bird house, I guess, but that's kind of the feeling that I wanted to give it. I wanted to make it look almost like a wooden birdhouse so I can add these eggs. Now this is an Easter craft. I'm going to include it with my Easter decor. If you want to go ahead and paint these eggs pastel colors, you could. You can easily change this up to be more, you know, whatever your style is. But I actually thought it would be nice to leave this up all year round. So now I'm showing you some card stock, the approximate thickness of the card stock that I use. And this is tissue paper that you would use to put in a gift bag or, you know, inside gifts, just regular old tissue paper. Mine does happen to be Hallmark, but I've used the Dollar Tree tissue paper too, and it works just fine. And this is a long, 
awaited for, I guess, and highly requested video to show you how I actually put this through my printer. I'm going to show you from the beginning to the end. So hopefully it will alleviate some of the mystery behind <laughs> how I print on my tissue paper. I'm not pulling it super tight. As you can see, I'm just making sure to the best of my ability that there aren't any wrinkles in there. I am using masking tape. You could use painter's tape if you want, just something that would be easy to remove when you're all done. So in this case, there's overlap. I'm just flipping it over and taping it around the edges. You can also cut it off if you want, that would work too. But this is what we end up with. And here, I know <laughs> I put it on the ground here because my cat was so curious about it and I was worried he was gonna hop on the table while I was printing. So I just went ahead and threw it on the ground. I know that my printer prints on the face up so I have to put mine facing towards me but voila there you go it comes out beautifully and now we're ready to do the rest so I'm gonna cut it off because I was kind of just too lazy to take the masking tape off I had waited a little bit too long after it printed up to let the ink dry and it's a little harder to remove masking tape I actually would prefer to use the blue painters tape or better yet that green one I think it's called frog something this is tape that would easily come off and you can reuse your cardstock that way if you want to you don't have to throw it away but I did what I could so now I'm going to tear the edges of the tissue paper this is to make it look less noticeable you can use water but because this design was really close together and kind of I cut it really you know I didn't have that much leeway in between the words I was worried if I used water sometimes with water it can um kind of go too far on the tissue paper and then you'll end up tearing deeper into the words when you didn't mean to so I just felt I had more control by pinching the paper really hard and nibbling away at it with my nails and I got the same effect so it all worked out and I'm showing you here how I go about gluing it down I'm using the extra strong glue stick from Elmer's um I usually use a Dollar Tree glue stick so it really doesn't matter what glue stick you use any glue stick will work beautifully and I hold my image down in place on one side once I have it perfectly positioned before I start gluing it down so I do half at a time and another trick here that I just figured out with this DIY is if you take a little bit of the original paint that you painted and you paint the edges of the tissue paper that really makes it vanish I mean you can barely notice it at all even in real life so that's another fantastic hack for you and last but not least I'm using that utility knife to gently this is dry. I actually waited about half an hour for the glue to dry. Gently cut away the tissue paper that's in between those cracks there, right? Because we want it to look like it's printed on these eggs. But I love this DIY. It's made with the idea that I can leave it in my kitchen all year round because it's not obviously Easter, but at the same time, it can easily be incorporated into Easter decor. I was on Pinterest. I noticed a lot of the crafts there have you know, they're using white eggs and brown eggs into the Easter decor. And I think that's a really pretty natural look, especially if you like neutral decor for your holidays. And now we're just adding a little bit of the Spanish moss on the bottom and that's it, we're all done. For this next project, I found this plain little bucket from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and remove the sticker on the bottom and just add some white paint now. I want this to, you know, look my usual style, which is kind of rustic. Nothing's perfect. If you like the perfect look, uh, it's easy to do. You just would use some spray paint instead or do chalk paint and do two coats until you get it completely covered. I like things a little chippy, a little streaky and a little you know, I guess distressed. So I painted the inside a little bit too. That is a free printable that I created. It will be down below in my description box. You guys know the drill. <laughs> so just go ahead and click the links down there and it will take you right to it. That site was having some trouble last time I uploaded there. Their server keeps dropping. So uh, really frustrating for me as a creator. I'm going to try and look into making another site of my own and upload all of my images from that site and see if I can't transfer it. So here I just tore the edges again. You can use water if you want to. 
for little projects like this, I usually don't. I have a way of tearing where I kind of press my nail into it and tear so it shreds on the edges and looks so similar to when I use water that I don't always bother using water. And then I took one of the Dollar Tree pens, just to stress the edges. I showed it in slow motion how it just soaks in. And now I'm just using the glue stick that is the strong one. Now I picked this up by accident. I didn't realize when I grabbed it at Walmart, I think it was about $5, but it's, you know, the Dollar Tree glue sticks work fine. And I've said this before, but definitely this one's lasting longer. It doesn't dissolve as fast. So when I use it, you know, I press down, it's not eating away at the glue stick. So there is some value there for your dollar, just so you guys know. And again, I'm using the Dollar Tree furniture pen. These come in a set of three, and this is the color Walnut. And I'm just going around the edges here and there just to kind of give it some character and dimension. I'm going to take some tissue paper, just put it in the bottom so we don't have to fill the whole bucket up with Spanish moss. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the Spanish moss in. Now the thing is when you do this, you have to make sure that you make very clear and define, you know, puncture holes. See, I'm doing it right here. I'm kind of pulling it apart to make a definite hole for your carrots to go in so they stand up straight because you know, otherwise they won't go through the tissue paper. So you just wanna make sure you do that. And of course, I just wanted carrots in this. I think this is a classic Easter DIY. They are so cute to me. I can never get enough of these little carrot patch buckets and we're all done. <music> If you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give me a big thumbs up it really does help my channel get seen here on YouTube and as always until the next video breathe deep fret not and do things that make you happy